Yo, what is up everybody? I am Ami Yoshiko. Welcome to my channel if you're new here or welcome back to my channel. Mother Freaker, episode 21, let's go. I have been waiting for this episode for so long and it is when the Prince Yuki fan club visits the Hanajima residence. And these were more comical, easy episodes for me to watch cause friggin I needed some peace. We start this episode with Uo and Toru walking through the halls and notice that the Prince Yuki fan club girls are talking to our main homie. Hana, and they supposedly wanted to write an article for the school paper about waves? What is that I smell? Bullshit! That's what I smell! And I was right. Their plan was to actually find Hana's weakness to eliminate our baby Toru Honda. First of all, these hoes be trippin'. However, one thing I wanted to point out, a lot of people were concerned about the hair color change of the Prince Yuki fan club president Matoko, and the creator Takaya actually responded to this saying that in the manga, the original hair color was supposed to be indigo. I actually went back and looked at the manga and even I thought it would have been like a lighter color cause you know when you shade in manga if it's like darker the hair would be like black or something but Matoko's hair was lighter in the manga, but if that's what the creator says, I'm not gonna say nothing, you feel? So these girls just jealous that Toru is very close with Yuki, so they want to keep her away. However, they can't do shit because our goth queen is in their way. They tag along with Hana to her home and we see Megumi. I love Megumi, he's so cute, he's so adorable. That freaking goth boy, I love him so much. They get to her house and Hana says to never say their name out loud and I'm just like, um, squeeze me. She makes them tea like the nice host that she is and these, these hoes are scavenging through her room. Are you serious? Where are your manners, ladies? And Megumi freaking hiding in her closet. Megumi comes out and the Prince Yuki fan club president asks if Megumi can do similar wave things like Hana. And he's like, no but I can put curses on people. So no wonder in the beginning, Hana was like, don't say your names out loud cause my brother gonna put the hex on you. Now I'm fearing for my life. And then that one freaking girl blows their whole cover and is like, so what's your weakness? Cause you'll totally tell us. And Hana's like, I get it now. Y'all don't even want to talk about waves for the dumb school paper. You all just don't like Toru and don't like that she is all up on Yuki, but you can't do shit cause I'm in your way and you fear me. I loved that part. I was like, yo, homie, yes. So you want to get me out of the picture so you can take out Toru? Well, my baby, that ain't happening. So Matoko, the club president, is like, yeah, so tell Toru to stay away from him. Ooh. <laughs> if I hated anything about people from like middle school, high school, it was like those girls who would like, like a boy and they would tell all the girls to like stay away from him, even though you never talked to them, never been near them and they don't even know you exist, yet you tell other people they can't be near them. I hated that stuff so much. It's like so catty. And as Hana and Mugumi say, it is all their insecurities and entitlement to his affection and attention just cause they like him. And it's just not okay. Even if you do love him, you need to respect his feelings first. I remembered this quote that was in the original anime that to me like touched me to this day. And it was, to truly love someone is to put their own feelings before your own, no matter what. And Megumi scared the shit. I love that freaking look on his face. I love Megumi. Give me my little goth child. I love him. And he was able to find their names because these freaking girls say it out loud right for him to hear. They scurry out of fear and we are here with Hana and Megumi and Hana is expressing her feelings on how she kind of felt just like them. How she was jealous on how Toru is always with the Somas and how she feels that she could be taken away. And she realizes that that is selfish and that is what love should be never be and she lets her hair down i love her so much she is so freaking beautiful i love my queen and get you besties like uo and toru they pay her a visit especially because i guess toru was worried for hana and ugh that is a smile I will freaking protect. That ending part with the curse though, um, that was some funny shit. Episode 22, let's go. I was not ready for this episode at all. This is another episode that will be entirely manga comparisons, which is actually so much easier for me to edit, um, thank the lord. And this wasn't in the original anime, so I was not prepared for this. We see in the beginning that Hana hears voices in her head. Poor, poor baby, she's panicking. We meet with the parents and they state that she has had these powers since birth. First of all, 
love Megumi, adorable as always. But yo, this episode was so hard for me to watch because as a fellow bullied child, <laughs> not as bad as Hana though, but she was bullied so hard, like yo. I got so mad, especially in this first scene, like where the freak is the teacher? Why isn't anyone stepping up to help her? And Hana in her head says that she wants the boy to die. We all have probably done once or twice in our life and the kid actually passes out. Doesn't die, but loses consciousness. And oh my god, we cut back to the house where I guess, you know, obviously teachers know what happened, told the parents. And poor Hana, freaking, oh my poor baby. She's like, I said in my head I wanted him to die. When are the police gonna come and take me? Hana, I wanna hug my baby so much. She is so scared, so terrified of these powers. But yo, I commend her parents so much. After that, she started wearing black to freaking resemble her sin or whichever and the bullying kept happening and of course other people knew and heard what happened because freaking kids talk and when other kids get hurt they blame it on Hana and say that she cursed them I just want to molly -wop these kids so bad do you hear me and precious Megumi is right behind her and Hana she uh, she doesn't even tell her parents about the bullying because she feels like she should be punished I, I know I keep saying I adore Megumi but damn it I love Megumi he prays for her, prays that someone will be there who will see her for who she is and just love and be your friend. Bless that boy so much. Ooh, I hate this part so much. These, ugh, this part was so hard for me to watch too. These girls hold her down, burns her arm with a match. Like, what the actual fuck? Like, I wanted to grab these kids, like, by the fucking hair. Are you serious? And again, where are these teachers? Why are these kids? I know in Japan it works differently, so I get why there's no teachers in there, but it's like still. I'm happy that one teacher came in though, but I wouldn't have just let them run out and say Hana did it. I would have made all of them stay there, stay in that room until I get the truth out. But poor Hana wouldn't have blamed them anyway. Sitting at home with her parents, they tell her that they should move and take Hana to a new school. Hana has such amazing parents. See, in the freaking fruits basket, so many of them have shitty parents, but I'm so happy that Hana has such amazing parents that just protect- they, they, they just want to protect their little goth angel and I just love it so much. I was crying so hard. And after transferring to a different school, she kept her distance and then she met the beautiful cinnamon roll, Toru Honda. And then she is called out by Uotani and they convince her to sit with them for lunch. And Hana's like, I can't sit with you guys. We wear all black on Wednesday. I'm so kidding. This is not a good time for jokes. I'm so sorry. She thinks that she will just cause nothing but trouble for them. And Uo and Toru are like, don't even worry about that, fam. We a bunch of freaks. So don't even worry. Don't, don't worry. Don't worry about it, fam. I loved this freaking segment compilation. The making of one of the best iconic trios. Go Oh, go off in the comments. Go off in the comments. Name me a more iconic trio. I'll fucking wait. Hana felt like she actually belonged for the very first time. And then, out of the blue, these girls came up to them saying they heard she killed a boy in elementary school. First of all, these I know they're just kids, but I'm like, yo, if she killed someone, she wouldn't be here. And that she burned a girl's arm? Excuse you. I wanted to molly -wop that kid so bad. Oh my god. She ran out of the room completely terrified that she thinks she used her powers without her knowing and hurt the girl. Toru ran after her and Hana tells her, I don't think we should hang out anymore. I'm only gonna hurt you. Please leave me alone. And Toru ain't afraid of nothing and tells her, no, we're growing such an amazing friendship. I might not know everything about you, but I want to learn about you. Don't let this be over. Oh, this bar I was crying so much. The tears wouldn't step. Uo comes in and it's like it's your choice but don't assume you're freaking causing trouble for us but if that's how you feel just let me know. Uh Hana crying broke my soul. She wants to be their friend so bad. This episode had me such a mess. I was so happy to see Hana's story brought to life in the reboot. I couldn't have imagined it done any better way. Episode 23, let's go. We start at school with the teacher saying to everyone who failed an exam, you need to make it up on Sunday. First of all, that's bullshit. And Uo's like, if you wouldn't have failed, you wouldn't have had to make it up. And poor Toru is like, <laughs> weeping in the corner. <laughs> Toru failed one exam. Freaking Hana coming out being like, if it makes you feel any better, I failed all my tests. Literally, 
me. Like, yo, I was a decently good student. I freaking did good in high school, but I failed all of my exams. I, I just worked my ass off and the teachers know I just had really bad anxiety since like I was a kid. So I would just work my ass off on everything else and I would do makeup tests a lot. But freaking university sucks, <laughs> especially for psychology where most of my classes are literally two exams and that's your fucking grade. <laughs> Ah, uh, kill me. <laughs> Kale walks with Toru home from school. She gets all in her head of how she promised her mom she would graduate from high school. And then she feels weak. Friggin' falls over. Poor baby. She's so freaking sick. And Shigure takes her temperature, confirms that you sick. And tells her no work, no cooking. Stop arguing with me and go to bed. I think it's adorable how everyone is just worrying about her. Freaking adorable Momiji. Taking her place at work. He's like, you won't even know she's gone. <laughs> so cute and Kyo, probably the cutest sundare ever tries to cook for toru and shigure is like what you making for us and Kyo is like go f yourself go order some takeout and toru is more than grateful that Kyo took the time to make her food but oh i love Kyo. he's so cute the biggest sundare the cutest sundare in the freaking world she's stressing out about the promises she made for her mom saying she wasted yuki's time from helping her study and she just wants to be reliable baby it's okay kyo is like number one chill to work yuki till he's dead literally i'm not kidding <laughs> and kyo admits that he just wants to see her goofy smile again i fangirled so hard that freaking blushy side look my fangirling could not be contained and zaddy dr hattori comes to give her a shot momiji and kisa are here it's so i like i said before i love how they're all just so worried and concerned just because she's sick see i thought this episode was gonna be peaceful but nope just wait it's coming the kids will come for from school and Toru did better on her makeup exams and poor Kyo in the rain he's weak and freaking continues to walk even though Toru's like I could carry you if you transform into a cat and he's like fuck that hoe and there is this ominous person watching over the trio but mainly focusing on Kyo we get home and Kagura's there to greet her beloved Shigure tells him get the fuck out and go on a date or something y'all just gonna destroy my house and Kagura asks Kyo if she insinuating Toru knows about Kyo and if you remember on Kagura's first appearance, she mentions this other form of Kyo and Kyo bursts at her telling her like, shut the fuck up. And we see a flashback bracelet comes off and some people don't think twice about that. But as we see that this other form and bracelet are connected somehow. I hated that part when Kagura was freaking crying on the ground just cause Kyo wouldn't hold her hand. Like really? We are back at the house with Toru and Yuki and we see this ominous person from before now in front of of their house and at the same time Kagura and Kyo return home as well and Kyo is completely dumbfounded by this person and Kyo says master damn I thought we were gonna get a peaceful episode y'all ain't ready for the next comparison but that is it for this video when I post this it's gonna be Friday I saw on the Hanato Yume magazine that I guess there is gonna be some announcement after the episode airs the finale today so um we'll find out what that is I'm hoping it's a season 2 release date and then I'm gonna try to have episode 24 and 25 comparison out by Sunday and then I'm gonna try and have another video out Saturday I'm really trying to grind if I'm gonna overwhelm me with fruits basket videos i'm gonna add some non-fruits basket content for you guys and that is it thank you guys so much for watching thank you guys so much for joining my weeb family i love you very much and i will see you next time bye